to get us started, I'm going to turn it over to our incredible head of school, Patrick McConnett. He sets the tone by inspiring all of us to keep the students at the very center of what we do and inspires all of us to imagine what is possible. And he's going to introduce you to some parents and students that have done that. And then I'll be back later to, to tell you more about next steps. So Patrick, it's all you. My name is Patrick. Thanks so much for taking your, your lunch half hour here with us. Um, I am proud to be our head of school here at Flint Hill. I'm also a Flint Hill parent. I have a kindergarten son named Jack and a fourth grade daughter named Charlotte. And also our family was new here this year um, as I accepted this position this year. We moved out from the other side of the country and it's been a really incredible experience. Um, oftentimes people ask me what drew me here to Flint Hill. Um, I say it specifically uh, that it really started with our core values and seeing these things and being able to understand the intentionality with which we um, experience our school on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, if you don't know, and I'm sure you've probably seen, our core values are respect and value all equally, lead and support with compassion, act with integrity, imagine what's possible, which we'll speak a lot here today. Uh, and then of course, blaze the trail because we're good Huskies and we're uh, preparing our kids and each other to go off into the world and make an impact. Um, coming in here as a new parent and a new head of school to Flint Hill, um, I really saw these core values in action. And ironically, here we are today on, on Friday, April 28th, it's our senior day. This is the last day of classes uh, for our seniors on campus today. Uh, before they head off and they do their AP exams and their senior projects before graduation in June. And all of today has been that imagining what's possible and then coming to fruition. So a number of our seniors over the course of today are going to be giving speeches to their peers and sharing out some of their Flint Hill experiences. And I had lunch, or, I'm sorry, breakfast with them this morning. And the amount of stories of them saying, hey, this teacher saw this in me, or I came up with this idea for a new club or a new initiative, or my community service project or my senior project that I'm working on, it's very much organic and intrinsic to the students, but supported wholly by our entire community and incredible faculty and staff to say, yeah, let's, let's yes and that instead of just saying no. And so if you have this idea, if you have this initiative, if you have this club you want to start or a, a unique approach to an academic project, We've all been living in that space here for a long while. And that's been really exciting because the 140 or so seniors that we have graduating in a couple of weeks, they each have now embodied this core value of imagine what's possible in their own experiences. And it's paying off now within our community and it's gonna best prepare them for life and college and beyond. So I see that right now on the tail end of it all. The flip side of that on the early end, uh, I see our lower school students right now really engaging in some amazing project-based uh, experiences in their classrooms. Our, our kindergarten, for example, in science has been learning uh, uh, about physics, essentially, pushes and pulls. And seeing those students and, and taking them out on a field trip to a bowling alley where kids are actually explaining, okay, if I threw the ball and it hit a bumper, what would happen to it? Um, or if I threw the ball really fast down the lane, what would happen to the pins? If I threw it really slowly down the lane, uh, what would happen to the pins? And there's organic and, and really student-centered questions that are arising within all of this. If I have a heavy ball, if I have a lighter ball, um, it's been really amazing to see that because we're starting at those early ages, um, certainly teaching the concepts that we want our students to be able to master but also giving them the latitude by which it's not rote, prescriptive, a bunch of worksheets or anything like that, but allowing them to be able to run with these things at a greater depth of understanding. And for me in the classroom where that magic happens, and it could be with a six-year-old, it could be with a 16-year-old, is when you have all of these students exhibiting this mindset at a deep academic level, the way that they push each other to say, hey, you're working on this, oh, wow, I had that idea, I'm working on that. How can we combine forces and really make this thing really special and, and move beyond? And so um, it, it builds these interpersonal skills of collaboration, empathy, teamwork, sacrifice, um, and, uh, and, and it really 
prepares our students to, to be special in and of themselves uh, and also in an impactful way for the community around us. So um, I know we're going to talk a lot about those those experiences here today, but I've been um, just really on Friday, April 28th, to be able to see that happening at both ends of our very wide spectrum of student experiences has been a lot of fun. And, and so to me, those are just micro examples of this macro core value of living in this innovative mindset and, and doing so with the proper structures, but also being able to launch our students to successes and a greater depth of learning than you might find in another place where it is wholly wrote or wholly prescriptive in, in other capacities as well. So um, to me right now on an academic basis, that's what imagine what's possible looks like. I know over the course of here this morning, I'm sorry, this afternoon, we we'll also get to hear more importantly, some of our student voices, and some of our, our parent voices about what imagine what's possible looks like for them. And I know I'll be able to transition over to some of those folks here in just a second. And then certainly, uh, I think we're gonna try to grab a couple of minutes if we can for any questions that you all might have, recognizing that we've got 30 plus families on this call uh, looking at us from a wide variety of divisions. And perhaps there's gonna be pieces of this that's on your mind as well. So. I'm first going to transition, if I can, to our lower school representatives. We have a lower school student uh, as well as a lower school parent. And so first, uh, uh, if I can see Zaniya on the screen, I'm not sure as I have my panel of everybody, um, but Zaniya Gray, our, our lower school student, why don't you go ahead and share with our families here on this call, what does Imagine What's Possible look like for you? Hi, my name is Zaniya Gray and I'm currently in fifth grade. I have spent six years here at Flint Hill since kindergarten, and my mom works at the upper school as a chemistry and physics science teacher. I'm also, all my teachers that I have been with here at Flint Hill for my past six years, they've been devoted, kind, and caring to teaching their students. Flint Hill's like unique curriculum, and the way my teachers teach education is none like any other. And, and I also, in third grade, my teacher, Kim Dewar, she was very kind. And when she was teaching us language arts, we had a writing fictional stories curriculum where I was inspired by a lot. I fell in love with writing. And as I went home that day, I asked my mom if I could publish a book. And at first, she said, no. Obviously, if a third grader <laughs> comes home and asks to do something big, you don't know at first. But then, as she saw me getting devoted to writing, as we got deeper into the language arts concepts, she let me publish the book. And it is called Magic and Spells which is about a fairy that goes on a big adventure and meets new friends. When I was in third grade, that was a big accomplishment for me and I was really, really happy. As that happened, I now am literally in love with writing ever since third grade. Another uh, accomplishment that I have achieved here at Flint Hill is they, we have a noetic math contest that we take as early as second grade for the students. And it is a series of unique math concepts and challenges as 20 questions. And it is a test that we take for math. But it usually happens two times a year. And for the past four years here, during second grade to fifth grade, I have been trying so hard to win something for the noetic contest. And this year with my teacher, Mrs. Carruthers, we got deeper into the concepts of math and I now was in love with math. And as that happened, I found myself winning a national honorable mention for the noetic math contest. And I was leaping with joy for it. Mrs. Carruthers is a really nice teacher. And this year with everything she's taught us, 
she's gotten to us a little bit more a, of different kind of concepts of math, especially a little bit more advanced. We have learned a little bit of sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade math this year, and it has been a ride. I now loved math, and with everything that I've done for the Noetic Math Contest, I take it as a big achievement this year. Fun Hill's unique curriculum is nothing like any other. I have experienced a lot of many other achievements that have not been listed, but I just had a wild and fun ride at Flint Hill. Our mascot at Flint Hill is the Husky, and as Mr. McConnett said, with our core values, the reason why we chose a Husky is because they always are intact and they pull the sled together. And since kindergarten, I have pulled that sled with all my other classmates and as a school community, we hope that you can help us pull the sled too. Thank you for listening. Thanks so much, Zanaya. Uh, we also have a lower school parent uh, on the call, uh, Chrissy Forrester, to be able to talk a little bit about her kids' experiences from that parent viewpoint. Yes, thank you. I loved how you ended that um, about the Huskies. That's really cool. So my name is Chrissy Foster. I love the theme of this event because it uh, truly captures the essence of our experience at Flint Hill. I have two daughters. Vivian is in junior kindergarten and Charlotte is in fourth grade. And I was brainstorming last night um, about some things that I could share because there are so many possibilities. The innovation lab and its amazing curriculum was a main driver for us joining the school the arts program, the Flint Hill community, and so on. So it's sort of wrapping my brain of, you know, where to even begin with all the possibilities. Uh, the school year is woven with a range of experiences, and you can really feel there's intention for how those build from junior kindergarten to high school. Uh, but I really wanted to emphasize uh, what really I kept coming back to, which is the joy and enthusiasm for learning that you'll find at Flint Hill. So I saw a glimpse of this when I toured, but now I get to see it in action day in and day out when my girls get in the car and they're so excited to tell me what they've done, what's coming. Um, and I believe it's that joy and that spirit that's really enabled my daughters to open their minds and to imagine all the possibilities uh, for their future. So there are um, events at Flint Hill that create rituals around the celebration of learning. And the junior kindergarten, they have Forest Fridays and Wednesday walks, and those allow little ones to go and um, ask questions and make connections with what they're learning. And then they go follow that up in the classroom with projects. Uh, so um, another point I wanted to make is that my daughters have benefited and been inspired by uh, the mentorship that they've received from students in higher grades. So whether that be in the formal class setting or in extracurricular settings, that exposure uh, to students in higher grades has been instrumental. So they can see what's coming down the line and how can they imagine their possible futures. So Vivian, who's in junior kindergarten, they work weekly with their fourth grade buddies. Um, they also spent a morning with the high school graphic design team working on redesigning snack packaging she was so inspired by that. She was pulling snacks out of the pantry and drawing up a storm at home. Um, another example is I took my fourth grader to Arts Jam and the visual arts show for upper school. And she was able to talk to the high schoolers and they had amazing advice for her development as an artist. Um, and the problems they've encountered, whether it be balancing their workload or problems, you know, when they encounter something with their art itself. And she really took that to heart. And in the car ride home, it was just really neat to see, you know, she knew exactly what AP art classes she wants to take. She knows exactly what her future is going to hold. Um, and I think it gave her a renewed understanding of all the important work that she's doing in the lower school will matter for her future. And then I had one, one other point I really wanted to make. And that's about the expectation to be a good Husky, because I was very pleasantly surprised when I joined the school by how influential this has been in our household. So there's a Husky code the students learn, and 
they recite it and they live by it. And it's become a core part of Vivian's identity and Charlotte's. Uh, but Vivian being in junior kindergarten, she takes it very seriously. And so I think that there's that expectation that you are a contributing member to your classroom community. And that challenge, uh, challenging students to rise to the occasion is such an important piece to imagining what's possible and then realizing that. So thank you. Super helpful, Chrissy. You're right, that Husky code helps out when we're dealing with those parent decisions at home every now and again on how would we want to be a good Husky here at home? <laughs> helps us with my six-year-old. Um, in our middle school, I'm going to transition over here really quickly. Just for our own awareness, we're going to play a pre-recorded piece um, from one of our eighth grade students because actually our entire eighth grade today is doing uh, advisory activities while our seventh grade is out on some field trips. So this is our eighth grader, Alex Sweet, who's going to be able to speak to you a little bit about some of his experiences. Great. Greetings and salutations. My name is Alec, and I'm an eighth grader here at the Flint Hill Middle School. And so when I was asked to be a part of this amazing event, the first thing I wondered is, what would I talk about? And the, the theme of this is how Flint Hill has helped me come alive. And so when I first approached this topic, it really, it was hard for me to choose just one way that this amazing school has helped me come alive. It's helped me grow in so many different ways. For example, I've discovered a newfound love of linguistics and of Latin because the school has such an amazing Latin department. And that has really, it's given me so many unique opportunities. For example, I've gotten to go bowling in a toga, which I don't think most people can say they've done. And I have the opportunity to go to a bunch of Kurtaman competitions and make friends with people, not just in Flint Hill, but in other schools as well. And so those are always really fun. And I get to go to national and state Latin convention, which is a real treasure and a treat. And that helps me grow in ways that I might not have thought possible before. But aside from just Latin, there are many other ways this school has helped me, has helped shape me. Another example is athletics. Now, when I came to Flint Hill, athletics were not at all the first thing on my mind, but they've really helped me grow for the better. So I was a member of the cross country team and now I'm currently on the Flint Hill track team. And both of these have helped me in so many different ways. Being a part of a team, especially here at Flint Hill is a truly special treat. And it's helped me so much, make new friends, have new confidence and find new things that I love. Aside from those, I've also enjoyed being in the theater department and getting to perform in the middle school play, which again has helped me make new friends and become more confident. Flint Hill is a truly amazing place where so much is possible and you can grow in so many different directions. And so I really love Flint Hill. Thank you. That's our, uh, our Kutaman Latin cross country track Sheriff of Nottingham, superstar, eighth grader, Alex Sweet. Um, we also have a middle school parent. Brian, are you on the line here? Would you mind sharing a little bit about some of the ways in which you've been able to see, imagine what's possible fit for your family at Flint Hill? I am, uh, Patrick, thank you so much for the opportunity over here and thank you everyone for, uh, for your time. Uh, I'm gonna take a slightly different view on what's possible and it's uh, uh, really from a parent's perspective. Uh, and so from a parent's perspective, um, imagine what's possible when, you know, you don't have to wake your kid up to, uh, to get up in the morning to go to school, but someone's excited to go to school. Uh, so I have an eighth grader, this is, he's finishing up his first year at school. Uh, he loves it. Um, he's excited to go to school. He's excited to talk about what he's doing at school. Uh, my father-in-law picked him up the other day and, uh, you know, I had a conversation with my father-in-law. He's like, gosh, you know, Nate is really enjoying it. You know, all he could talk about is what he was doing at school today. Um, and so it was, uh, it was a fantastic uh, kind of awakening uh, to really see that he enjoys it and, uh, and is uh, enjoying uh, his classmates and his teachers. Uh, the other thing I would say is I remember going through um, kind of the, the process of, uh, of looking at Flint Hill and, and some other schools. And one of the things that really stuck with me was uh, imagine a, a world where um, it's, you know, teachers are partners in helping 
uh, truly educate your uh, your children and care for your children. Uh, and I think that is something that is uh, that has been very true. Uh, one of the uh, the best examples I would give you is uh, my son was having some uh, challenges with some of his math homework, and uh, you know eighth grade. Uh, you know I'm not a rocket scientist. Well, no, I I'm not a rocket scientist, but he's getting to the point now where some of the concepts I'd have to go back and study. And I said, hey, let me see if I can help you. He's like, you know what? Don't worry about it, Dad. I'll go in and ask Miss McRae, uh, and she'll help me. And so you know he, he's he's fine uh, asking his his uh, teachers for for help. Uh, which I think is absolutely terrific, and he's doing uh, doing very well in school. And I think a lot of that is really around a partnership with the uh, with the faculty uh, in in having a wonderful experience. Uh, and then the last comment I would just make is uh, the comment on, uh, and it's funny to hear Chrissy and and the students all talk about uh, you know being such a good husky. Uh, but I remember the first time he said that he goes, "Dad, you're being such a good husky." And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" Uh, he said, "Oh yeah, that's our mascot, the husky code." And I said, "Oh yeah, that's that's great." Uh, and so. Sometimes I feel like he's a bit sarcastic in it um, because he's at that age, uh, but it really is true. I think there's a, there's value behind, uh, you know, kind of what it is they're learning uh, and how to become you know, just great citizens. So uh, thank you very much. And again, uh, you know, really appreciate the opportunity here. Thanks, Brian. Uh, thanks so much. Uh, and you look great. I like that vest. So that's a solid look. Um, in our upper school, we're joined by both a student and a parent. And so I'm going to start with the student, uh, Rachel Pow. Rachel, are you on the line? Hi, Mr. Khan. I'm right here. How are you What's guys up? doing? What's up? How are you doing? I'm good. It's my senior day, so it's been kind of a whirlwind of emotions that I'm experiencing today. But um, yeah, thanks for having me. Can you tell everybody what you got at IHOP with the rest of your senior class this morning? What was your order? I got strawberry and banana pancakes with chocolate chips, and I got some hash browns. And it was actually my first time at IHOP, surprisingly, so um, it was really good. <laughs> it was <laughs> nice to rent the whole place out with the seniors. Why don't you oh, tell yeah. everybody about Imagine What's Possible for You? So, hi, everyone. My name is Rachel Powell. I am a senior here at Flint Hill. And um, just to give you guys some background, I joined my eighth grade year. Um, so one thing that's really defined my journey here at Flint Hill has been cybersecurity. Um, that's been my passion and that I've discovered through um, Flint Hill. So in my freshman year, I took a cybersecurity class with um, the teacher, Mr. Michael Snyder, and he has become my mentor and my go-to person, my teacher throughout my year at Flint Hill. And I have, he has encouraged me to really um, think outside the box and imagine what's possible with my passion for cybersecurity. So um, I became the president of the cybersecurity club. And this most recent year, I had the opportunity to work part time at the Department of Defense. Um, but this meant that I had to work part time up in Maryland, which has been really hard. Um, at first, I thought it wasn't going to be possible because I have to have a full curriculum and I have to have classes and I still have to attend school. So I was nervous that I wasn't going to be able to pursue this opportunity. But I was encouraged to imagine what was possible. I got this job and I worked so hard with um, the upper school counselors and the admissions team and um, Ms. Ayers and Mr. Chang to help me make my job possible. So I have, am very lucky to say that I've been able to work up there twice a week. Um, again, I didn't think it was possible because I have to miss so many classes and so many days of school, but um, Flint Hill has really helped me um, imagine what's possible and supported me in all my endeavors. And I, then I've been able to work up there um, my whole senior year, which has been really, really nice. Um, but that's just been a common theme throughout my high school career. I've been able to in, pursue my passions and my teachers and the community at Flint Hill has been right there behind me to support me through all of my hopes and dreams. And I've been successful in all those endeavors. And I know I couldn't have done it without you know, the support of the Flint Hill community. And really every single person that I've ever come in contact with in my high school career has um, pushed me and has supported me and has told me that I could do whatever I wanted to do. Um, they've allowed me to brainstorm and figure out and take my game to the next level. Um, so it's just been a really incredible experience. And I'm, I'm really sad to leave. And being Husky has been my favorite thing in the whole wide world. And um, Flint Hill has really helped me develop myself and learn to, you know, not be, if, not shy away from the challenges and the opportunities that I can face in the future and to go full steam ahead and take them um, and learn how to be confident in myself. So yes, that's, I'm open to any questions, um, but yeah, it's just been a really great experience. 
Nice job, Rachel. We're excited for you, and I hope you enjoy seeing your day here today with those yes, speeches and the you. fun things. Uh, we have an upper school parent on the line. Robin, thanks so much for joining us. Can you share a little bit from your perspective as a parent? Absolutely. Everyone can hear me okay? You're good. Great. I'm going to talk for one minute because I want parents to have an opportunity to ask questions. So I'm going to make it quick because most of the parents said what I was going to land on. I'm Robin Black Burns. My daughter is Athena Burns. She's in ninth grade. I'm going to talk about Imagine What's Possible from her lens. And that is, she is a true STEAM girl. She loves STEM. She loves the arts. People have seen Athena. She's raised her hand for dance, oratory, instruments, performing arts, robotics. Um, so Flint Hill has embraced the whole of Athena through those activities. Model you in New York City um, for the Broadway program for children who are in the arts. When we chose Flint Hill, it was because of that differentiator. As a parent, and I think Brian, you mentioned this, you want your child to be excited to go to school. That takes a stress off of us while we're at work. No one wants a stressed child. But I also like the fact that I don't have to drive all over town after school to put her in activities to fill the gap that the school does not meet. That's, that's a game changer for me. So she can stay there after school and, and, and Flint Hill embraces all of her possibilities. She is not one dimensional, she's multidimensional. So she has imagined every opportunity, every uh, career um, uh, that she can think of through Flint Hill's amazing offering. So I just wanted to quickly point out and drive that home that um, Flint Hill embraces my daughter through the multitude of not only academic offerings, but the co-curricular so that she could be a true STEAM girl and not just one-sided arts or science. So I just wanted to wrap up quickly. Thank you. Thanks so much, Robin. And she crushed it in Mamma Mia at the dress rehearsal last night. We're excited for those sold out shows this weekend. Thank you. Uh, I, we do have a couple of brief moments for, for questions, and I know sometimes it's easier if we use the chat box over on the side. Uh, if there's any questions, if you want to raise a hand, uh, and Jennifer, I'll, help, I'll defer to you to guide us here to keep us on time for families' needs, but what questions might be on your minds? I'm going to go ahead and actually, I'm going to push back a, a little bit just on Rachel, because I've only got you for about five more weeks until you're in our alumni database. Rach, if, if you could tell yourself something as an eighth grader coming into this place new, what would you what would you push for yourself? And what would do you wish that you knew then that you know now? So I would definitely say the years I've spent at Flint Hill, I've really learned that if I want to do something, if I can imagine it, it's 100% possible. So I would tell all, my eighth grade self and all the middle schoolers and lower school kids that if you can dream it, it's possible. You have a support system at Flint Hill who can support you and help you make things happen um, and help you be successful. So really, um, I've taken full advantage of that, but it's definitely something that I want people to know is that if you can dream it, you definitely can make it happen um, because Flint Hill really values people who think outside the box and want to break out of the mold and imagine what's possible and definitely blaze their own trail. That's awesome. Thanks so much. Uh, oh, okay, Rachel, you got to answer the college question. How are you feeling? I'm feeling nervous. I'm going to um, Northeastern University in Boston um, and I'll be doing computer science and cybersecurity. So I'm really excited about that. She gets to keep all of her Husky gear because they're mascots the Huskies as well, which is nice. Yep. Zania, can I put you on the spot if you don't mind? What is it a moment in which you felt challenged in the lower school and how did you overcome it? Well, multiple times with the noetic challenge, I definitely felt faced with the challenge. Every year I was always scared for math. I wasn't really that into math and we never really based a specific type of like system for that kind of noetic math challenge. But this year at fifth grade, we have based all of the advanced math um, curriculums and I have overcome a challenge that I've been trying to overcome for the past years. And for the first time when I got the honorable mention, I was really 
surprisingly really happy that I had overcome a challenge because I never was really into math and being into math is something that's really important because it's math is every day part of our lives and we never have one second where we can just not have any math in our life. Really great. Thanks so much for sharing. There's a couple of questions that have come through the chat that are kind of uh, straight, straight factual, um, one on transportation and one on average class size. Uh, and then another one uh, around the transition to to Flint's Hill. So let me let me at least touch base on the, the the straightforward info sizes. Average class sizes at the high school or across the board, we always aim for about 18 kids per class. Um, quite honestly, as you move up into our system, and, and Rach, you might even be able to speak to it before you speak to your adaptation to, to Flint Hill. It varies when you're in your you know your freshman sophomore classes. Sometimes is there. Uh, uh, on the lower or mid level in the upper school, you're usually around 18 kids. But sometimes we get into our higher level classes where I'm thinking about some of our high level math, AP, perhaps some of the, the classes that you've been in, Rach, um, where those classes might be smaller or high level foreign language or some of our really unique electives. We have classes that are running here in our upper school right now that sometimes you can count the amount of kids on one hand um, with the teacher and a lot of that direct information. But Rach, can you just give us two quick things? Uh, your largest class and your smallest class sizes this year as a senior. Uh, and then also, what was it like to, to come in new as an eighth grader? Yep. So my biggest class this year was probably my English class, maybe around 16 kids. Um, it's gen Yeah, that was definitely probably the biggest. My smallest I've ever had was my junior year AP Latin class. I think I had five, including myself. So, I mean, it really varies in... Um, I'm happy to say that it does not generally go above 18. So we have that really close student to teacher ratio. Um, to answer your question, Ms. Tracy, yes, I started in eighth grade. I thought it was going to be hard to adapt, but it, it really isn't. From coming from a different school, seventh grade to Flint Hill in eighth grade, I really just fell in step with the community and all my all the people here. Um, the teachers are, I think the teachers at Flint Hill is what sets us apart from other schools, hands down. So I was really able to fall in line with the community. It was, I was super embraced. Um, I was able to find myself and find what I was passionate about and find some friends that were like-minded um, to myself. So the transition was not difficult at all. And the transition from middle school to high school is also not difficult. You know, it's, you're a Husky in the middle school, you're the same Husky in, in, the, in the high school. So, um, but yeah, the, it was not difficult at all. And um, I'm happy to answer any of the questions about middle school to high school transition or what high school is like in general. Yeah, thanks. And then Jen, can I put you on the spot on, there's a question around uh, percentage of our students or amount of students that take advantage of our, our buses, our, our uh, transportation options. Can you speak to that? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so I, I don't have the exact data on that. Our, our head of school uh, manage, or sorry, our associate head of school, Ann Peterson and Melissa Turner work really closely with the transportation and the bus routes every year. Um, I just based on, on families I know that that ride it, I would say a couple hundred where our institution from JK to, to 12 is a thousand. And I would say somewhere between like maybe one or 200 would be a guess. Um, we can certainly share that information we do have stops that span the region. So we're going out to Leesburg, we're in Arlington, National Harbor. Um, so we do span out uh, quite a far radius from Flint Hill. Um, our transportation website will list the neighborhoods um, and cities that the, the bus stops. And if you're really looking to see if it can work for you or not, um, I'm glad to share some more detailed where the these bus, like what is the intersection of the bus stop? Um, if you're looking to see if it, it works for you. Um, there are, we have kindergartners that ride the bus uh, to school and we also have upper schoolers. So it does span across all, all three divisions. And I see another question also came in from Denise about ninth grade entry and how many are Flint Hill students versus new students. Um, and I'll kind of give you the data. And then, Rachel, I'd love to hear you talk about what that's like to have those, those groups mix. Um, so it's about half and half. 
So about uh, for the, the ninth grade class, it's typically about half, maybe a little bit more are coming up from our eighth grade, maybe two thirds, depending on the year, and then anywhere from a third to a half are uh, students coming from other schools. And just from, um, you know, talking with our current students, they're always so excited when new students come. And that's true for every single grade level. Um, but you look at eighth graders, a lot of them who have been together a lot of years, and they're really eager to meet, meet friends, um, make new friends. And so they're, they're out there introducing themselves and getting to, to know our new students. Yeah. But Rachel, um, love for you to, to share your experience of, of that mix of the, the Flint Hill students and the, the new students. Yeah, of course. I remember um, in eighth grade to ninth grade transition, our my class size pretty much like doubled. I don't know if it's exactly doubled, but it grew by a lot. And it was really nice to, um, you know, have my eighth grade friends, but also meet some new people, um, especially those from no, you know, not the Flint Hill community and join us and um, learn from them. So I can, I can say that I have friends that are, you know, lifers all the way up to people who joined last year and freshman year. So it's a great mix. Everyone integrates really seamlessly. So it's just a good experience. And yeah, I mean, who doesn't like, you know, a bunch of new people coming in to make friends with. I tell you what, our middle schoolers are really ready for some fresh kids coming in into the upper school. As I think about my eighth grade right now, they're great. And it's, it's fantastic. Uh, Kimberly, you had you had asked a question in our, our text chat of how many lifers do we have graduating from Flint Hill? For us, our true lifers are students that started in JK and then continued through the upper school as the, as well as then we bring in our life our kids in kindergarten. So between students that began in JK or K, I believe this year, if I think about my senior class of 2023, we're looking at around 12 to 14 or so kids in in this year's group. Um, and uh, as well as one near lifer, a, a student that started in our lower school, family moved out of state for a couple of years, and then they came back uh, here and he's finishing out his upper school career here too, which for a transitionary environment like the DC area to have a family at a school for 14 years uh, is, is really valuable. But it also considering our JK starts at 14 or so kids. And so to have the chunk that we have had all the way through here uh, and coming along, it's it's really magical for that. Uh, the size of the senior class, I think this year's senior class is roughly around 140 or so, maybe 142. I'd have to double check those numbers. Uh, and then the SSAT from Kelly. Uh, Jennifer, do you want to talk a little bit about the admissions process? Yeah, absolutely. So the SSAT is not required. It is optional. So if you've taken it and you want to submit it, you're absolutely welcome to. We will consider it as part of the admission process, but we don't, don't require it. So it's up to the family. Uh, for the most part, um, looking at the other admission requirements, um, you know, gen it's a little bit different across divisions, but um, generally transcripts, teacher recommendations, parent questionnaires, student questionnaire, um, a interview for both parent and student for grades um, for middle school and upper school. Um, and then at the lower school for some of the lower grades, we have a on-site gazelle um, observational um, element to the admission process. And so those are the general requirements. And we usually get the data that we need to make a decision um, throughout that, that process. And so it um, usually we're fine without the SSAT. But if you're kind of questioning if you should submit that or take that for Flint Hill admission, um, we're here for that conversation. I think one thing that I've been impressed by, both as a administrator having worked in a number of schools, as well as as a parent who's gone through this admissions process, um, are we try to, and I think Jennifer and her team does a great job. I hope you as families experience this on your end. We try to take a holistic viewpoint at every single student and every single family, recognizing that when you have a community of a thousand kids across these age levels, really when we're talking about say, Chrissy in your grade level in, in fourth grade, uh, or, or in your JK students class, you know, these are communities. We get to know each other really well. And so we're really building um, these grade levels with an intentionality of not only what does this child or this family bring to our community, how is that going to impact the learning of their peers around them, um, but making sure that there's a, a good mission alignment here too. We're not a perfect school. We're not perfect for everyone, and that's okay. Um, but also that admissions process should deep, deeply dive into the both the qualitative and the quantitative, but an SSAT, quite honestly, is a single snapshot in time. 
Um, and this is not a school that's going to label its kids by a single test, by, by one way or another. And so it's a data point, but it's not a decider. Um, do we have parent social uh, events? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And, and honestly, um, it works really at an age and developmentally appropriate phase. I see as a lower school parent, um, uh, we do a lot of different events for our parents specifically to help engage them in our children's learning. Um, so essentially about once a month, we do parent classroom visits in which lower school parents can come into the classrooms and see their students in their learning environment. It's a great pride point for our students to be able to share what their learning is and for us to be able to better understand their experiences. Um, and then also as we move on, not every middle school or upper school kid wants their parent coming to school and that's totally okay. And so really we realize that those bonds are created interpersonally amongst our parents. And so we foster that through a really active parents association. We have a number of volunteer events and where parents can volunteer in our snack bar at campus events, uh, as well as some appropriate parent engagement and parent learning events. Uh, and, and so as we look ahead, we're already planning out our mapping for programming next year around um, issues and topics that are going to be really important for parents to understand. Um, so everything around mental health, physical wellness, sex, drugs, and rock and roll uh, from a counseling standpoint, as well as issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and being able to support our families from that. Um, and really just bringing people together to, to partner with the school in, in healthy ways too. A um, couple of quick questions. And I also want to be mindful because I know we're going over time. Um, we do have a girls lacrosse team. We've got a great tennis team. Uh, oh, and Don already put the, the teams on there in the links there for you too. Um, but uh, athletics, arts, and academics, it's, it's a three-legged stool that we want to make sure are robust for all of our students. Um, we do have athletic requirements as it continues in the, the middle and the upper school. Uh, we also have fine arts requirements for our students. Um, and so I think about Robin's words in, in describing her daughter, Athena, as a true STEAM kid she's out there and, and she's doing a lot of those really great things as I know Rachel has and others have too. Um, but we want to give our kids a really nice, well-rounded experience. So um, I want to turn it over to Jen, if we can, to start landing this plane. And then that way, Jennifer, why don't you talk about whatever the next steps might be for families? And it might also talk about um, Tracy's question here for on-campus visits. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Patrick. Um, so to, to follow up what Patrick was saying also about that, that partnership and that mission alignment that we're looking for throughout the admission process, we, um, you know, from this stage forward, we're going to keep, the admission team wants to keep open dialogue with you. We're going to have conversations and we're your partners to find out if Flint Hill is the place for you. And so we offer a variety of different ways for you to, to navigate and to get to know us better. We have um, our September 1st kicks off our big event season um, and also opens up our application season. Uh, applications are due in January for 2024. It'll be January 19th. And so we'll offer a ton of events during the fall. There will be events to meet parents. There will be uh, events where you come get a, a glimpse inside the classroom, what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis, where you hear from teachers, administrators. And so on September 1st, we'll send out a announcement for anyone um, who's in our system, which you are by registering for this event, when those events launch. Now, for the remainder of this year, we do have a couple more events. And so if you're interested in upper school on May 10th, we have a virtual upper school preview. And so you can check that out on our events website, register if you're interested. If you're interested in another division and you don't want to wait for the events for the fall, you're ready to, to start those conversations now, great. We are here for it. So you can schedule a tour with any of our admission officers. I'm going to send all of this in a follow-up email too, so don't worry about uh, trying to, to take notes, but um, we'll send a link for the May 10th event. I'll send a link for how you can schedule tours with all of our admission officers. We have admission officers in uh, each of our divisions. And, um, and I know some of you submitted some additional questions during your registration. So thank you so much for that. And we love questions and thanks for sharing those. And so admission officers are going to follow up directly with you to have some of those conversations and make sure 
all of your questions are answered. So um, as you have more questions after today, we, we also love inspiring questions. So I hope this event, I hope it answered some of your questions and I hope you still have more. Um, so share them with us, email our team members, schedule appointments, give us phone calls, um, and we're, we're here to answer all of those questions. And Kelly, uh, I think it was Kelly that asked earlier about transportation. I chatted Melissa Turner, um, who is really close to that. It's 175 students, and you helped me learn um, a precise number today, too. So thank you for that. 175 students take our uh, use our transportation and our bus routes. So um, so glad I could answer that last question. Uh, we look forward to continuing the dialogue. And like I said, we'll send that follow-up email and really appreciate the time that you took to, to get to know us and to see um, how you might be able to imagine what's possible at Flint Hill too. So thank you and have a wonderful day.